I got my grandma an Xbox One as a joke on Christmas, but now she's been playing for three days straight and I can't get her to stop. <laughs> Does this actually count as wholesome? Because, yeah, um, I guess you just had your Xbox One left over because you got a newer version and it was just like, hey, here's your present and here's a present as a joke. But now she's actually like enjoying herself. It is wholesome because it is kind of cute and wholesome to see people like enjoying themselves, but but I'm I'm actually just surprised just because I know my grandparents and like even my father. Well, my father probably even worse or more so. He would just like call it silly and not want to do it at all or never like admit to loving it, you know? So I guess it does count as cute and wholesome. Hello baby Chris and welcome back to my channel. We do a lot of frustrating videos on this channel somehow. Um, so we gotta do like wholesome memes at some point, like you know, in between to kind of balance it out a bit. So that's what we're doing today. It's time for another wholesomeness doses. You know the deal though, before we continue, y'all gotta get hydrated. So grab some water or some tea or whatever else you like to drink. And then we'll check out some more wholesome things. Are you hydrated? Good. Let's go. I tried to video chat with my cat and she actually recognized me. This is so cute. Look at these eyes. That just like doubled in size. It's like, wait, what is going on? What is going on? Oh my god. You. I love you. Oh my god. It is so cute. Because, you know, people kind of expect cats to be assholes. And some cats really are. But this cat is so far from it. I mean, I'm guessing every cat probably has that side of just being a rascal, you know? And accidentally breaking things while being playful. But, but look at this. How could you hate cats? Look at this. This is just adorable. If you're allergic, I will kind of let you get away with it. Because... I can understand not liking something if you have like a severe reaction to it. <laughs> okay, showing respect to waiters, taxi drivers, helpers and security guards would not degrade your position. If anything, because honestly, I will respect you more for being a nice person versus you having an important job. Because I, I do not care. If you're like, nice and respectful to other people, I will automatically respect you more. Versus you being... <laughs> no, but I'm the CEO, I make so much more money than y'all, so y'all ain't shit, and just like... You know... That's already weird. Um, and especially, if you're in a leading position... Shouldn't you, like, lead by example, really, and just show people that, hey, um... It really doesn't matter, just like... Don't be a douche to other people, you know? Shouldn't you? Well, well, uh, pe people seem to disagree with me. <laughs> Some things never change. Because if your grandpa's a little princess, your grandpa's a little princess. There's nothing you can do about it. But it doesn't even matter if you're taller than him. You're still his little princess. And honestly, it's just cute. It'd be so funny if you had this exact dress or like a dress that looks exactly like this dress because you're obviously not gonna fit into the dress you did when you were like two or something one how old is this baby i am off like guessing ages and it doesn't get easier with toddlers somehow anyways it'd be even more adorable if you had like the same style of dress but this is still so cute this is so cute come on I grew my hair out for over a year to beat Bob Ross for Halloween. My wife was a happy little tree. I know this this picture is very old. I know we've all probably seen it. But this is still so adorable. Also, I felt like I needed to show like a happy, functional, straight couple because we've also done like are the straights okay and they usually aren't and we see too many couples just being weird with each other so this is just so cute and i had to include it i don't care how many times you've seen this 
you just have to look at it again, I guess. Concerned about a loss of bees, Morgan Freeman converted his 124-acre Mississippi ranch into a bee refugee. He's hired a gardener, filled acres with clover, planted hundreds of flowering trees, purchased 26 hives, and has turned himself into a beekeeper. Dude just went, I've I done enough movies, I, I have enough money, I don't care anymore. I gotta do something else good with my time. So saving the bees it is. Like, of course, he's not gonna be able to save all the bees alone. But, he's gonna save so many bees. And honestly, why wouldn't you? Like, wasps are evil, and I don't like them, no one likes wasps, but bees? Come on, that's just cute. Depression, drawing his anger sword. Draw your sword, and we shall do battle. Me, peacefulness, sunshine, doggy, love, food, hydration, friends, exercise, Depression. Um, this was a bad idea. But to be fair, I kind of like this analogy. <laughs> because A, it kind of makes fighting depression a bit more badass than it would normally seem. Because, yeah, dealing with depression isn't like fun and games. And is it magically gonna do better if you exercise and eat well? No. But you can definitely help. Like, it can definitely help. Same as like dogs and sunshine and peacefulness. I hate how much the going for a walk, especially if it's sunny, actually helps for your mental health. Like, it's not gonna cure your depression, but it is gonna make you feel better. You know? So, take that depression. Um, you can go now. It's getting warmer outside. At least the seasonal depression can just get wrecked. We don't need you anymore, you don't need to come back in winter. Like, it's okay if you just like want to go somewhere else and... You know, terrorize the wasps or something, go do that. And leave us alone, please. The five love languages. Words of affirmation. This is a good burrito. Acts of service. I made you a burrito. Receiving gifts. Here's a burrito. Quality time. Let's go get some burritos together. Physical touch. Arms around a person wrapped in a warm hug, like a burrito. If I didn't know any better, I would say this person really likes burritos. And I do think sometimes food references help clarify things, so... I'm not sure if this helps, maybe it does. You know, like if someone doesn't really understand what the love languages are, maybe this will actually like be really helpful. But apart from that... That is... This is just fair. Burritos are really good. I like burritos, so honestly, someone will be like, Hey, I made a burrito for you. Would show me how much they care about me. Definitely. Moms with their new bones. Oh my god, he's the most beautiful baby ever. He looks just like me. Meanwhile, the newborn looks like this. Does this count as wholesome? Because yeah, that's kind of what babies look like. This clay lump or whatever looks kind of cute not gonna lie but it also looks really weird like especially really like newborns in the first few hours i'm sorry don't show me pictures they're never gonna be cute after a few hours maybe maybe would i have a better reaction to you showing me your new puppy or kitten absolutely so does this really count as awesome? Really? I mean, you can still be like, hey, c congratulations. Like, yeah, he, he has your eyes or something. Because honestly, is it just me? I can never... Like, when people are like, oh my god, he has your eyes or you know, so I'm just like, what? Ha that No, I never see it. Maybe that's just me. But this is kind of legitimate. Although with like a lot more red is what most new ones actually look like to me. My research into building a computer is complete. I've learned that keyboards have 88 buttons. Huh, we're almost there then. What do you what, what do you need a computer for? What do you want to do with a computer? And to be fair, I saw a TikTok recently, uh, I, I didn't save it, otherwise I would include it, of someone getting like the fake cardboard computers 
for their cats who like would want to lay on your laptop while you're working because they just want to be included. So they get their own little like hot bod with like a scratch pad and everything. It's adorable. And somehow it would be just as cute if you put like little frogs on it to be honest. But why do you want to build a computer? Hello, want to sit? Whatever you may be going through, be brave. You will find your path and walk it well. Stay strong, traveler. Come back for more tea. If you needed some cute little, honestly, rat pandas are just generally adorable. If you needed some words of encouragement, there you go. Because literally, finding your own path, as difficult as it is, can still be worth it. And I know it can be frustrating when you feel like you chose the wrong path or that you're that you waste the time by doing something you know you're not going to do forever or you don't want to do. You can focus on that, on oh my god I wasted so much time and it's so frustrating that I haven't found my thing yet that I'm really passionate about or something. You can focus on that and not be happy at all. Or you can try to kind of shift your perspective into a little bit more positive one and kind of just try to focus on the things that did work or that you maybe learned that you wouldn't have learned otherwise, you know? So I know it's like easier said than done to just be positive and honestly we're not doing toxic positivity on this channel. We're doing realism on this channel but still like if you focus on the negative that's what you're gonna see. If you focus on the positive that's what you're gonna see. So, you know, kind of trying to trying to be positive sometimes is um, maybe a good approach. Gentlemen, it is with great pleasure to inform you that it is my 22nd birthday and a few moments ago I received an email from my dream company confirming that I have been accepted for the internship position that I had applied for. Congratulations. That's cool. Like, getting that news in general would be so cool. But getting it on your birthday is kind of like an additional birthday present that you weren't really expecting. Which just makes it even better, somehow. So, congratulations. I hope it will still be your dream company after you started working there. You know, so good luck. Um, have fun, I guess. And hey, happy belated birthday. <laughs> When you realize that the approval of people on the internet means absolutely nothing and that you're a good person no matter what anyone online says, wow, this feels good. Generally, yes, because especially online, people have an easy time being mean and rude. And it's ridiculous because it's almost always the most random people. It's never someone you knew in high school that's coming to your page and be like, Oh my god, really? You gonna wear that? Is that what you're doing with your life? It's always like random ass people who your life has like no influence on. Like random people commenting weird stuff on the videos or just like saying rude things to you because you're like, Hey, this is my opinion. That is like, you're so stupid. For why? Like, if you disagree, okay, and like, kind of having a normal discussion, sure, why not? But people have a very easy time being just like, unnecessarily rude. And if you're able to just like, stand above that and just be like, <laughs> what do I care what this random user on the internet says, this random person thinks, then good. Because literally, it, it has no influence on your life whether someone else likes you or not, especially random people on the internet, so yeah, it gotta feel good and that's kind of where we're heading, right? <laughs> Can I have the usual? Yeah, a large pizza with anchovies on the side, in a bowl, filled with water. So um, how have you guys been? <laughs> I think we all like pizza dates with our friends to kind of just like get delicious food, maybe pizza together, and just like catch up, especially if you haven't seen each other in a while. Or because you just like doing it regular, because you're both busy, and then you get up, like, get together every two weeks, and just like, hey, so, what's been going on, you know? That's, that's cute. Don't need two friends, you know? At least not in that way. <laughs> what my girlfriend thinks she looks like, versus what she actually looks like. 
it do be like that. Listen, I always find it hilarious when people try to act all tough because with your partner it's not necessarily that dramatic, you know? Because yeah, obviously you gotta find them adorable, but it's always funny when like random ass people try to act all tough but it's just ridiculous because this is what they look like to you. With your girlfriend it's just cute, with other people it's kind of funny, you know? <laughs> When you had a bad day, but you get a text from a friend you haven't heard from in a while. Look at that, you've helped me find my smile. That's great. Listen, we all need friends like this. And I literally, I don't care if you've known this person in real life since childhood, if you just met them two weeks ago, or if you only know them online. I literally don't care. We all need friends that are able to cheer us up. Because this person didn't even know that you were having a rough day, they just like randomly hit you up. You know, and that's cool. And honestly, friends who understand you and who are there for you are just amazing. And I know we're all kind of like busy with our own lives, so you can't obviously always be there for another person. But still, when this lines up so perfectly, it's even better. Me, wearing the ugly shirt that my grandma gave me because I know it'll make her happy. It's like, I don't really like this shirt, but if it makes you happy, I'll wear it. I think I would probably only like wear it if I go to visit her or if we're gonna take like pictures for her, you know? But to be fair, my grandparents don't really give me clothes. My grandma always used to make us like fluffy socks, but I hate wearing socks, so I don't even wear those anymore. I'm sorry, Grandma, but I think my girlfriend is kind of stealing them. And I gave most of them to my sisters anyways, because I don't wear them and they sometimes do, you know? So thanks, Grandma, I guess. For noticing and ignoring my embarrassing moment, I would like to award you the highest honor I can bestow. The people who have a special place in my memory badge. Okay. It, there's kind of different embarrassing moments. There's the, oh shit, I really hope no one saw that. And then the people who see that and ignore it, thank you. I don't, you know, you maybe don't even know these people, but they will still like have a special place. Because they're just like, no, oh, I'm just gonna look away. I didn't, I didn't see nothing. What are you talking about? I didn't see nothing, you know? And then there's like the embarrassing moments that are just kind of small embarrassing moments that are just like so funny two weeks later, you know? In those moments, strangers, yeah, they're probably gonna ignore it anyways, or they should be no ignoring it, but if they're your friends, they're probably gonna remember and point it out, and you can laugh about it together, you know? But big embarrassing moments, you don't see nothing, you're not gonna say nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> this, literally just as a tree appreciation moment, because why not? I saw this, I thought it was cute, so we're just gonna... We're just gonna look at this. Honestly, if you don't like trees, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Bro, are you ignoring our compliments? Not cool, man. Seriously, how does that benefit you? You're just disproving your own work. We complimented your work because we like it. It also means that your effort on it is valid to us. You need to learn how to take a compliment, bud, and feel the satisfaction of getting one. You've earned it. So keep on the good work and never let your hobbies drown. Why do so many people have such a hard time taking compliments? Literally. Because it's... It's always like weird, it's like, oh no, it's nothing, and they always just like put themselves down, and it's... Really sad to see somehow, because it's like... We're literally telling you, you have no reason to feel ashamed, because... We noticed that you put in work, or we notice that you're doing this thing really well, or that it brings you a lot of joy, or whatever. Don't dismiss it. I know, apparently it's very uncomfortable for people. I don't really get it. Like, I never know how to react either. Like, if someone gives me a compliment, I don't really know how to react. But I'm still gonna be grateful for it, not just like, oh no, it's, it's okay, it's nothing, you know? Like, just... I know, again, easier said than done, probably, but just... Learn to accept it. I mean, people don't say that stuff for no reason, you know? Come on, I'm waiting. Wait, there's there's not a, not enough space. 
Oh, oh, finally, cozy. <laughs> I somehow really love it when people just take these random pictures of animals and just turn it into a cute comic. This is adorable. And if you like cuddling with someone, why wouldn't you? Like, it doesn't matter. You, As long as you're not overheating, why not? <laughs> mm, I feel lousy. Wait, I'll get you a cup of tea. Try this. Right. Oh, hey, I do feel better. Yep, it works every time. Again, what did I say? We all need friends who know how to cheer us up. If you're a cat, this might just do the trick. If you're a human, drinking your favorite tea or your favorite coffee or, you know, whatever you like drinking might also help. Like, of course, again, like having a nice cup of tea isn't magically gonna fix everything. That doesn't mean it can't at least help a little bit, you know? So kind of having a lot of like different tactics or things that you know are very likely to cheer you up. Like having a lot of those is a good idea. And I think the trouble is actually like remembering to do it and then actually being able to do it because especially if you're really, really depressed, you probably know going outside and getting fresh air or making yourself a nice meal or something will make you feel better. Having the energy to do it obviously is tricky, so having a friend doing it for you is uh, probably very helpful. In some ways, the mind is much like a garden. It needs your care, attention and effort. Left to its own device, it will soon become overrun with weeds. And where there are too many weeds, flowers cannot grow. I kinda needed this picture earlier when I said, you know, if you focus on the negative, you're gonna have more negative, and if you focus on the positive, like taking care of the flowers in your garden, you're gonna have more flowers. But we're just gonna bring it up again as a reminder because, well, it's easy to forget and again, easier said than done to just be like, hey, just, you know, because gardening is hard. Gardening is hard. Plants are sometimes really random and just like dying for no reason, you know? So it's not easy to take care of your garden, but that doesn't mean you can't try, you know? Because, again, the more you practice it, the better you're probably going to become at taking care of the garden. And the easier it is to take care of your thoughts as well. Me, bonding with the one internet friend that I never met, but they really understand me. I've said it before, I've literally said it before in this video, and I'll say it again. I really don't care if you've known each other all your life, because internet friends are still friends. And it's such a boomer concept to be like, no, but you don't know each other just because you've never actually met in person. Because A, I feel like a lot of people have an easier time opening up and like kind of being more authentic when it's like online, when they don't have the person right in front of them, when it's like easier to take a time to really express how you feel and who you are than it is when the other person is sitting right there. So A, some people just have an easier time being more authentic to their online friends versus in real life because there's somehow less pressure. And even if you don't, like even if you're telling these people the same thing that you're telling your best friend who lived next door all your life, I really don't care. Friends are friends. And you can be there for someone without being physically there for someone. You know, because literally, one of my best friends, I have never met her in real life. I'm not sure we ever will. It'd be really cool, obviously, if we were to meet up someday, but at the same time, that doesn't mean it's less of a friendship. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I searched for my dog for 20 minutes. Why do animals kind of have a habit of just camouflaging? It's just funny. Because honestly, um, I feel like with cats and dogs specifically, just saying some like trigger words like treats or walk, and if it's a dog, you know, might really work. Like unless they're sleeping and actually not hearing it, but 
kind of climpering around with their treats would probably help you find your pet really quickly. Uh, um, I'm just really glad this one is laying on a bed, because there are pets who just camouflage on, like, carpet or something, which is a little bit more dangerous if you don't see them, you know? But still, why does this fit so perfectly? I've been very worried about Cheesecake lately because she's so bulbous. I was worried about worms, or worse, fluid buildup from FIP. I took her to the vet yesterday and they ran some tests, looked for fluid. I was stricken with anxiety, heart racing, untreated FIT is usually fatal to kittens and losing Cheesecake would be too much. The vet comes back into my room and hands me the carrier with Cheesecake back in it. Her face doesn't indicate much, she looks at me, I look at her, I am terrified. Just fat, she says. Cheesecake is just fat. Well, that's that's good. That's really good. Because, yeah, I mean, if you literally overfeed your pad and they're just like, basically too fat to even walk properly, you know, that may be not so good anymore, but it's definitely preferable to having a sickness, especially if it's not easy to treat it or if it's like very fatal, especially to kittens, because honestly babies are... Babies are just so much more sensitive to a lot of things, you know? But the fact that she's just a little chubby, you know, is very good news. It's very good news. And at least the kitten didn't do this on purpose, like the dog who like coughed on purpose so that their owners wouldn't go to work, you know? And then they paid like a lot of money to the vet only for the vet to tell them that it's a fake cough. You know, that's funny in hindsight probably, but at least this little baby isn't doing it on purpose, okay? <laughs> Don't hold back the tears, it's okay to cry. <laughs> um, do you feel better now? Yes. The flower feels better too. Don't cry into your flowers if you're not a rain cloud because not sure like salt water is gonna be helpful but still you will definitely feel better you know and honestly being honest about your emotions might generally also help other people even if they don't particularly bloom because you cried on them you know but still you will definitely feel better kiss me i can't darling you're too drunk it's not right okay even the most sexed up man in all of history, knew that taking advantage of women was never okay. Austin Powers. Because, yeah, feeling desired is all great and fun and games, but if the other person is literally just drunk, it doesn't really count. You know, because... Because, and you don't do that. Like, if you're both drunk, whatever. Right? Because then you're both not really, like, fully mentally present and, you know, but if you know that this other person is way too drunk, or way more drunk than you are, you're not gonna do anything. That's just not right. And if even the man who's just very canonically obviously known for wanting sex with hot women all the time and loving it, is able to say no, then you really have no excuse for not saying no, you know? <laughs> I'm just gonna show you some cool tricks with my bamboo stick, waving it around. Huh, that looks great. Can I try? Okay. Starts chewing on it. Not bad. What did you expect a panda to do with a bamboo stick? C like, I know you were still using that. I'm sorry, now it might not be as cool as before, you know, if it's suddenly like half a short because it was delicious. But at least Panda's not hungry anymore. So there's that. Is it as impressive as... the other thing? No. No. But still, I, I can understand why you did it, Panda, it's okay. If at first you don't succeed, have a nap, find a snack, and then try again. Honestly, this is kind of a great approach. Because generally, instead of just sitting there and trying over and over again and just being frustrated, taking some distance and just kind of like refueling, you know, 
or just taking a break and doing something different might actually help you do the thing in the first place. You know, you might still need to try again a couple more times before you actually succeed, but you're gonna be way more well rested and therefore more capable of doing it because if you're exhausted and just frustrated, it's not gonna make it easier, you know? So honestly, great approach. Sometimes we need to be more like dogs and just take random naps and love snackies. You know? <laughs> Anyways. I love wholesome memes. This is, these are probably always the most relaxed videos. Because if I do like queer videos, there's always the chance I'm gonna get mad at like homophobes and stuff. Now with wholesome memes. So it's always a nice break, you know? So either way, I hope you enjoyed the memes too. I hope you're hydrated. If not, maybe go drink something now. And I'll be back in a few days with my next video.